Hey everybody, it's Mike from Motorflows and welcome to today's video. You know, today is Friday the 13th, 2023. And, you know, it's an interesting day you know, in the S&Ps. We were coming in the session and we were trading a bit lower, right? If you remember uh, the day before, Thursday, right? The CPI number came out and, you know, we were just all over the place. Like, uh, looks like one of those EKGs. And then we opened up, pushed a little bit higher, sold off. Then we were selling off coming into the cash session. And actually we made a new low before the cash opened up. Um, but we didn't take out that low. And then we rallied uh, pretty much the rest of the day. And, you know, we closed up at 4019. So it was a big move from basically around 60, um, what was that, 62 all the way up to 19. Um, so quite a nice move. Now, yesterday I was talking about value finding value in the market. Now, most of us have heard of, you know, value areas, things like that, right? And, and a lot of traders will like to do a value area. You know, they'll, they'll show the value, they'll draw a profile and it'll cover the whole entire day. Or, you know, they'll even, you know, put up yesterday's profile. This is a tool that I got from Ninja Caters. Um, you know, it's just a simple tool to draw out the value areas. And people will say, well, you can see, you know, I'll take off this other profile. Nah, let's keep it on. So this one, take off today's. So this was yesterday's volume profile, right? And let's say, well, you see your, your point of control, you know, we were sort of rotating around there. The problem I've always had with volume profile, and again, you know, I studied market profile back in the 90s from Dan Grams at the CME. He was a very famous teacher there, um, user of volume profile. And... I, I just thought that, you know, for me, my own style of trading, you know, intraday in and out, if I'm looking at, say, the profile, you know, how we're trading relative to yesterday or, you know, even today. So, for example, right, we'll start that, um, you know, this is, you know, we're coming in here 8.30 in the morning. Okay, so this is today's profile. So this is yesterday's profile. This is today's profile. Cash is opening up right in here. Um, we rally up to the value area high on the volume profile for today. Now again, yesterday's um, point of control is over here at two and three quarters. I mean, you can make the argument now, nah, you know, draw that line there, put it there. You know, the market came all the way up, got up to O2 and then came off down to 94. Wow, okay, that's great. But you're not getting many trading opportunities per se because, you know, if you're looking for, you know, a test of yesterday's value area high or value area low or point of control or even today's, it's really only giving you just a handful of opportunities. Now, this day, today, right, we sold off and we rallied all the way back up. And, you know, with, with order flow, I took the idea of looking at the volume profile and, and I wanted to put it on a shorter time frame. I actually put it on a bar by bar basis. Now, what I am not looking at the shape, you know, because I know a lot of traders are all caught up in looking at the shapes and how profiles are forming, you know, you know, is it a P shape? Is it a B shape, et cetera, things like that. But really, I'm just concerned with the value area high, the value area low, where the point of control is falling in there, right? And and how we're trading relative to it, or, you know, as people that look on a more macro sense, how it's trading relative to yesterday's uh, value or even a weekly value. So what we did, right, is we said, hey, let's put it on the bar, right? Because this is just your normal volume footprint chart the bid ask, which has been around for decades already now. And we said, hey, let's draw where the value area is on the bar because I want to know where the value area high is, where the value area low is. We already know that was one of the key components of order flow was the point of control, right? That's each bar has a point of control. That's the price level in the bar where the most volume trades. Okay, well, if you're looking at that, why not also look at the value area high, the value area low? I mean, we could have just drawn a line to indicate value area high, value area low. But the nice thing about order flows is kind of visual and you could plot it on the bar and sort of you know where it's forming. And it's interesting because, you know, we're all so used to looking at normal candlesticks. But when you're looking at the value of a bar, it's quite interesting. You know, sometimes um, it forms, you know, on one side of the bar or um, you know, in the middle where it's expected or where you're seeing, um, you know, like, like this candle here, right? We're trading, you know, we, we open up, trade all the way down and we close up, but we're, we, we didn't even close within value, right? And if you've ever studied 
volume profile, market profile, you know it's important where you're closing relative to the value area for the day or where you're opening up relative to the previous value areas. Now, one of the things that I like to look for, and I was showing it to people on a 30 second chart yesterday, and, and I did get a couple emails and comments saying, Mike, you know, a 30 second chart, that's too fast for me. You know, I don't know who's going to look at a 30 second chart. Okay, fine. Let's extend it out a, a one minute chart. Okay. Same things I'm looking for, right? I'm looking for those point of controls or sorry, the value areas where they don't get retested in the next bar and it's potentially can start running, right? Because you know that, you know, the, these in profile analysis, whether it's market profile or volume profile, you have a, the phrase virgin point of control, the naked point of control, right? It, it's a sign of course structure the market is going to come back to eventually it may it may not now I've, what i've noticed on you know on a more micro level meaning you know a one minute chart or something like that is sometimes it may never come back to those areas um for a long time okay especially on a day time frame you know because we're day traders right and so we're not looking to take a, a virgin point of control like here and expect the market to come back three days from now to that level by that point i'm, I'm over this level I'm, I'm focusing on new levels so basically what we're looking for are those value areas that you know are just being left out there right dangling here right here's one okay but again you don't know that the value area is going to not be retested until the second bar closes okay here's another one this one's more powerful right because now this is your value area here you got every bar's got a value area and you're watching where the second bar closes is it closing above it or is it coming back into it right if it closes above it doesn't test back into it great that's a potential trade now what you want to be watching is the next bar is it continuing in that direction this next bar no it comes back in there that's not a valid trade here's another example okay here's your value area then the next bar opens up and starts running runs to the upside okay doesn't come back in and test it okay good now let's watch the next bar okay starts trading up Okay, doesn't come back down. Perfect, right? This is my opportunity to be getting long in this bar. Then it starts going up, right? It keeps going up. And this is from, you know, what bar is it? You know, 78, 79 in here. Trades all the way up into, you know, 10 points within 10, 12 minutes. Okay. Here was a potential short, right? After you got long, you had a potential short. Okay, we're trading below it. But then the next bar, trades right back up into it. So that short opportunity, well, you should, you're already long, so you're not really concerned that you got to cover it or take your loss. And you could ride it up, right? It was the same thing that I'm looking for right here later in the day, right? Whether it was a 30 second chart, a one minute chart. So this is at nine in the morning. Okay. Point of control, or sorry, value area. Next bar opens up. Okay. Then the next bar trades into it. Not really a trade opportunity. Here we go. Open up. Uh, sorry, the value area is um, there. It's exposed. The next bar doesn't trade back into it. Next bar opens up. Okay, fine. That's your area to be getting long. Okay, then you get a little short here. It comes back up in here, tests it, get another long here, another short here. Okay, but you can see what's interesting about this is these are acting as support and resistance. I mean, if you're looking at this, just take it from right here. Okay. This is the value area. Okay, it comes back in here. It's holding as support. It goes up. You have this new value area here. It comes back down to that value area, and it's holding. You have a bearish one here acting as resistance. So what does it do? It comes right back up there. Bullish one here. Okay, and you see it's just holding in here. Bearish, bearish. It's just holding there as well. Okay, this is a doji one. That's why it's gray. Here's another one. Supportive. Goes up comes right back down what does it do it goes sideways at that support area kicks off another support area okay and you can just see how it, it happens like this all day long right your support area comes right down tests it goes back up okay this is a gray area then here support is just going sideways and again you can see this day in day out here's your value area right goes up starts going up turns into resistance here okay Support, resistance, resistance starts coming down, testing these support areas. All right. And then obviously later it started shooting up, right, on that big run up to these new highs, the resistance area here. All right. Another resistance area. Support, support. 
right? And it keeps going up. And this is on a one minute chart. Same thing if you're looking at a five minute chart, right? I'd be looking for the same things. Now on a five minute, you may not get as many signals as you would on a 30 second or a um, one minute chart. But you know, here, 1145, okay, right here, 1145. It's up, it's holding, okay? Then it runs into some resistance here, comes back down to that support area. Then it starts working its way back up. You got a new support area, okay? Just like that. I mean, it's something that I, I've been using for a year, for not say years. Um, we've added this onto our software in 12, year are we, 2023, late 2021, I think it was, second half of 2021. And it, I just found it very useful to use in my trading. You know, before I would be drawing out little profiles. I like to do, you know, sort of anchored profiles, like, you know, from a high to a low and see if there's anything interesting going on, right? So from like this swing high after the cash open to this low, see if anything's interesting going on in here for testing or coming back up, if we're going to run into some resistance, things like that. Um, you know, then I, I would draw it from this swing low. You know, once we make this new swing high, what do we do? We come down into the point of control. And honestly, I found that to be a bit tedious. I'm like, I need something a little bit better. And I just found putting it in the actual profile is much more useful, right? I mean, and every market, you know, whether it's S&Ps or gold, right? This is my gold chart. You, know, you can see the gold here. Okay, let me uh, get the crosshairs up, right? Here, this value area here, another value area here, another value, smaller one here. Um, this is a stacked imbalance. Um, then you're sort of running up in here the high of the day. Some potential short here, potential short. But again, it's not going any further down than that one bar. And people say, well, you got a bullish one here. Market didn't go anywhere. Well, okay, we're at the highs of the day, 1925, basically, after we had been rallying since, you know, I mean, way down here. You know, 740, there was a nice point of control you could have gotten long off of, right, at, at 19 bucks. So, again, you know, whether it's gold, whether it's E-minis, you know, I don't know. Was, I guess you could even look at currencies, right? Pull up euro currency. I'd be looking for the same thing. Now, again, now this is a five-minute chart. It may take a, a minute or two to come up because I don't have the five minute chart loaded. One of the things I've noticed with Ninja Traders, if you actually have the, like that chart that you're trying to pull up again, it will load a bit faster. But you can see here, right? You can see the levels right here, right here. And again, you know, once you start adding a little bit of common sense to it, like, oh, okay, I've got a swing low coming in here and I got that bullish value area. Okay, you know, maybe I could be looking to get long, right? If you're at near a low or up here near a near a high you know come up here going sideways and you left with that big value area there before the market starts dropping again there's so many ways you could use it rather than just indiscriminately taking every value area that's just out there like this was yesterday okay we're up here this is our high of the day at, at 1205 this is a five minute chart then you go sideways and then you get that bearish value area here the next bar another one Right, and then we even come back and test it before we sell off. So, I mean, there's, there's plenty of opportunities, and you can see here, right? We hit a support area, and we're holding that support. So, there's, there's trust me, there's a lot of ways you could use this and apply it to your own trading, especially if you've got some sort of indicators. And where it gets much more interesting is when you add other tools to it, um, you know, such as if I were to add, say, the exhaustion prints. Okay, let's just pull that up here really quick. Exhaustion prints, where are you? And again, you know, it's euro currency. I mean, we'll keep it at nine, but you could even just put it in at five, okay? And I'll just make it, well, I'll draw it out until tested. This will be interesting. I'll make it a little bit darker so it's a little easier to see because it's both green and red as well. But by having it slightly darker, it can stand out a bit more. And again, yeah, this is the beauty of order flow because there's a lot of little things that you could take away and use into your trading. So look at this. Okay, what do we got here? This bar here with the, the naked value area, it's got an exhaustion print. Down here, 
naked value or it's got an exhaustion print. You could almost just look for things like that. So hopefully, you know, you're starting to think about, you know, how you could use it in your own trading. And especially if you have my software, um, you know how flexible it is with adding certain things of order flow. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to subscribe to the channel so you'll be notified when I post a new video. And, you know, be sure to like it as well. You know, those, those likes uh, do add up over time and stroke my ego. So thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Bye-bye.